This is the instrument that, um, that I replaced the switching transistor from the uh, plus 5 storage supply. And it's a good candidate for to continue restoration because uh, it mostly works. Uh, it has a problem with the sweep, the auto. Uh, it should be in auto mode. But uh, when the sweep isn't triggered, there's no visible sweep, so auto mode isn't working. Possibly these switches mode, um, the sweep trigger mode switches are sticky and not don't seem to be working right. So I think that's the problem is the switches. So that'll, that'll require pulling the uh, uh, this trigger board and the timing board to get to those switches. Then in the vertical has a broken and a bent shaft on the attenuator, broken knob, bent shaft. There's really no way to straighten the shaft without um, you know, damaging say, other components, say the cam, the switch cam. So that requires replacing the vertical attenuator, which requires disassembling the entire uh, left side, the vertical preamp board and the attenuator board and replacing those. So that'll be the subject of this video. Now, um, to get the variable sh vertical variable shafts out, the designers very thoughtfully provided a way to get to the couplings on those controls. By putting a notch in the circuit board right here. And uh, you can just see the coupling. I need to get to the set screw on the coupling. And they provided an excess hole to get to the variable shaft coupling on the, this is channel one. One set screw, turn the knob, other set screw. Now I can remove the shaft with the variable knob on it. Because they would be in the way when you actually remove, get down to removing the boards. Next I'm going to remove the, um, the position shaft and knobs. 50 thousandths, he makes a 50 thousandths. This one actually is broken on this instrument, so. Oops. Now, um, need to remove all the connectors off the board. Take a picture so that you uh, can get them all back in the right place. Although on some boards, um, the color code of the, of the uh, cable is marked. This one, for instance, is green and black, so it says 5-0. This one says 3-0 because it's orange and black. Uh, this one says 4-0, it's yellow and black. Some of the ones back here are more crowded, so there's not so much uh, label labeling. You want to try to, these need to be bent back out of the way. There's this one. And there's all the ones on this side. And the last connection to remove is the delay line. And three of the pins are in the socket pins on the board, but one pin on this side is soldered. So it's a trusty soldering iron. Move this capacitor out of the way. The easiest thing I found is, is you heat the joint 
wedge a small screwdriver under it until it comes out. And it's supposed to be a heat relief. Well, it goes into the ground plane, so it takes quite a bit of heat. The next step is to remove the screws holding the board <clears throat> and knowing which screws are the proper ones is important because some of these visible screws actually hold a shield underneath this board to it and don't need to be removed to remove the board but this needs to come out and I'm using a number one Posidriv screwdriver my last video uh, was, was pointed out that I misspelled. I added an E to the end of Posa Drive, so it must be pronounced Posa Drive, I guess. But this is a, uh, you need a 316 nut driver. And there's a washer. Move the three screws at the back. Two screws at the front. Now the of the, there are four screws, two of them are holding a, a shield on. The screws you want to remove are the inner ones. magnetic pickup tool is handy to lift out screws although some of these sometimes the screws are stainless steel or not magnetic now I'm going to remove these uh, attenuator shields okay this is the last screw Now I'm just going to remove the attenuators by pulling them up. Be a little stiff. And coercion is needed. Now note that on the back are some fingers, and uh, those go behind a shield on the on the attenuator board below. And uh, so you need to be careful when you're reinstalling the shield that the fingers get in the right position. Now the next step is to unsolder the connection between the attenuator and the uh, input FET. And you can do it at either end. There's a 33 ohm resistor here. You can do it at either end of that. Now the board is in theory loose. If we lift up the back, now there's one more thing to unsolder. There's a small ground jumper here between the, uh, well it goes to the high voltage shield, goes to the vertical preamp board that has to be unsoldered. They do, the book does, the instruction manual, does recommend removing the shaft for the, uh, for the, invert, the vertical invert switch. Do that by prying, carefully prying the end with a screwdriver. Never found this easy. the little uh, sort of bezel or uh, I don't know collar around the front panel came out with it so don't lose that okay there's one more screw that needs to be removed and it's this one 
it isn't actually holding the shield. It's going to a, a stud from the board below. <coughs> now the board is free. Now I have to lift it up and back and pull it backward because uh, there's between the shield and the uh, little metal bracket there it's caught so it wouldn't come out now oh that's the uh, bandwidth limitation um, is in the way too probably should have removed that now this uh, the connection to these two variable pots is a harmonica connector on there. I can remove that. Now the board is loose. And you can see this uh, variable control is really damaged. In fact, I had to break the coupling to get the shaft out. But there, you can see the, the uh, shield on the bottom and the, so some of the screws that remain are holding that shield on. But that last one uh, went through a hole to a stud down below. <clears throat> so now the attenuator, or the, uh, I think this is called the mode switch board, is exposed. But I still have to take out the attenuators because of the uh, bent shaft. So <clears throat> I need to remove the, um, this board. And the number of screws. Remove this shield and a quarter inch nut driver. One more screw. I can remove this shield. Now at the back, the back is this harmonica connector, and it's a single wide connector, but there are two positions for it, and normally it goes on the top. If you're doing some testing, uh, you can you move it to the bottom of the test position, but when you later on when you reinstall this harmonica, make sure you put it on the top. Pull it out. And have all these other harmonica connectors to remove. I'm going to move this wire out of the way. Remember, eventually it'll be routed back and over the top of the board, but don't forget it. I did once. <coughs> now uh, we need to remove. attenuators, attenuator uh, assembly, and that requires uh, disconnecting it or uh, unfastening it from the front panel. There are four screws behind these two brackets, yeah, but those screws are not accessible until you remove the coupling capacitors. To remove the coupling capacitors, have to unsolder one end. And I'll hold the back end with a long nose pliers. Unsolder the front. The capacitor is soldered at one end to a resistor, and the other end is uh, into a uh, socket pins on the board so we can remove that capacitor. I'll do the same for the other channel. Now I have to remove four screws, two screws for each channel that hold the uh, fasten this assembly to the front panel so use those quarter inch nut driver to loosen them.
And if you happen to have one of these um, Heathkit patented nut starters, uh, it works great on to get the screws out of there, or the nuts. And will come in really handy later when you have to uh, put the nuts back in. That's that side, I'll do the other side, the other channel. Now there's a couple more harmonicas to remove. have to remove these two studs. That's with a uh, 3 16 nut driver. Now there's one screw and it's behind this broken shaft. And there's a screw here, two screws. Now I can just lift the board out, although there's, let's see, there's two, uh, there's connections to the uh, little uh, scale lights, skirt lights, pull those out. Now this board is free. And I can lift it up and pull it back. Except that the, that bent shaft is uh, causing a little bit of problem. Now we have this board loose. Uh, do we have? I have another harmonica that goes to the uh, the bandwidth lights just to come off of here. So, now we have the uh, assembly and this is the uh, the bent shaft. In fact, it's bent so much that it's, it's just locked the variable shaft in place. So, this is now a discard or we can recover parts of it, but the attenuator of the cam Shaft to the cam, attenuated cam switch is uh, a goner. Just incidentally, the uh, behind this cover is the high voltage transformer and the high voltage multiplier. So if you had to work on either of those items, you would have to do this same amount of disassembly and then remove this cover to get to those. To uh, install the new vertical, this is the it's called the vertical mode switchboard. <coughs> I'd look it up in the manual. Um, Reinstall this board. Basically, it just should slide in, but the tricky part of getting the vertical mode switchboard in is getting the buttons, the vertical mode buttons to line up with the holes in the front panel. And they suggest using a tool. I'm going to use the end of the uh, oops. I'm going to use the To tease the buttons. Carefully, don't want to scratch them.
that's the last one. Once the push buttons are lined up, the board should push into place. And you need to reconnect. Down there, there are the uh, uh, harmonica connectors that go to the skirt lights. There's a two pin connector on the, actually, it's on the bandwidth limit indicator bulb or LED. And uh, harmonica on this side for the skirt lights. Okay, I have the board back in place with some difficulty getting the two harmonicas that are down here the, by the front of the board. Um, <coughs> now, I have to put the rest of the screws in this board, which is it's called the vertical mode switchboard, but also has the attenuators on it. So There are two studs. You have to get them in the correct location, so I'm going to do those first. One stud with a washer goes here. And the other stud with a washer goes here. It's near the top of the instrument. And if we're tightening, make sure the other holes are lined up. Now I put the other screws into this board. Oh, by the way, I sh this little uh, thing here. Don't forget this. Make sure it's here before you put before you put the top board on. Um, before I finish the screws, or the uh, screws on the circuit board, I'm going to put the nuts back on the two studs that hold the, um, let me hold it to the front panel. And this is where the heath kit nut starter really comes into play. Because these nuts are difficult to get on otherwise. Now I tighten those with a quarter quarter inch nut driver to make sure they're not, not cross threaded. Put the rest of the screws in the board. It's one here in this corner. Uh, 
And while I'm back here, I'm going to reconnect the harmonica that goes on this connector. Make sure it goes on the top row. Next, to reinstall this shield. All right. <coughs> Installed this screw by mistake. <coughs> And a quarter inch nut. I think it's best to pull off this bandwidth limiting uh, control rod, switch rod. And you have to push out the little um, collar that's around the front panel in order to let go through far enough give you some clearance later and then I'll reattach it make sure it's oriented the right direction there is access through here to reattach it later to the uh, the switch the bandwidth limit switch and by the way when I had the, uh, the other board out in fact I'm going to do this now um, spray some contact cleaner in the switches Now, we can put the uh, preamp board back in, and it has to slide, this lip right here has to slide between the shield that's on the board and the, and the actual circuit board. Plus, there's this stud right here has to fit in a hole in the shield, so getting everything lined up so that it goes on with out difficulties not hard. And get all the cables out of the way. Now it should sit down on the now there's a harmonica connector that underneath needs to go back down in the side here. Now we can install screws back on the board. I'm not going to tighten everything until I get all the screws in place. And in the middle is this stud. Put the little uh, the wing that, that is a uh, grounding connector, I'll put it on later. And two more screws at the back. 
well, three more screws at the back. Now I will go through and tighten down all the screws. Oops, not that one. This one. This one, these two. Now this wire Let's do the harmonica here. Now before I put the the, the preamp board in place, I should have re reattached these harmonicas that go into the vertical mode switchboard. And this assembly Finally, the last two pin harmonica here. Okay, there's the cable, this little cable that has two harmonicas on it that goes across here. Oh, no, okay. I guess I've got this in the row. This one goes here. And this cable goes here. Cable that comes across from the from Now I'll reinstall, well actually the first thing to do would be to reattach the uh, delay line. Now reattaching the delay line can be some difficulty. The pins have to be straight so they line up with the holes on the board. And one of the pins, of course, is soldered. The other two, other three plug in. I've actually cleared the solder out of the ground hole <coughs> so that the pin can go in easily. Then, re then I can resolder it. Um... So I have to get all the pins lined up. And the connector's seated. Pins are seated. Now I can just solder the ground side.
This is the bandwidth limiting switch. The shaft for it. I carefully maneuvered the shaft. I'm going to push it in. And then I have to reinstall the um, collar around the front. Next I'm going to install the shaft for the, uh, this would be channel 1 variable control. And again they provided this uh, access port to tighten the uh, coupling. And it takes a 50 thousandths. These couplings you don't want to tighten them too tightly because the actual will actually crack the aluminum portion. And the channel two variable control through this notch in the circuit board. Now I'm going to reconnect all the cables and uh, as I said, be the uh, some of them are numbered with the color code. reinserting the capacitor, the coupling capacitor, into the two socket pins and then I'm going to resolder Capacitor lead to the resistor that goes to the connector. I'll do the same for the other side, the other channel. Sorry about my hand. Oh, okay. The last thing to do is to solder this ground jumper making sure it doesn't short anything else out Now I'm going to reinstall the uh, button for the invert switch. And it has a small um, sort of collar that I removed before. I have to put it around the front of the switch. I have to do that in order to get enough length to uh, reattach the shaft. Push it in. Now I can push in the collar. I'm reinstalling the uh, position shafts sort of temporarily because I'm going to take them back out when I go to, in, to reinstall the uh, shields over the attenuator, but um, 
Uh, I'm going to actually operate the instrument without these shields just uh, for a while um, until I figure out that it is working properly. And I'm not going to worry about the alignment of the knobs for now, the position dots on the knobs. I think that's everything is now reconnected on the vertical board and I can actually try out the instrument. Well, I need to install the front panel uh, knobs again. Now we're ready to install, reinstall the front panel knobs. on the AC-DC buttons. Now putting on the attenuator, actually a volts per division knobs, is tricky because uh, we don't know exactly what orientation to use. So going to put the knob on temporarily and rotate the shaft around to the maximum Oops. maximum counterclockwise then They can line up the 50 or the 5 with the left hand skirt light opening. And tighten it. And just allow us just a small amount of clearance between the knob skirt and the front panel. Tighten both both set screws. Might do a uh, minor adjustment later. And we can reinstall the variable knob. And I think if I can turn the shaft until it's in its detent. And then It's uh, it's properly lined up.